Hello, what's up? Cedric and Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we'll be answering viewers. And look, this is old. We get it. It's a month old. It's about Tyler Jones. Both of them are. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep it right. We're going to keep it fair. I said what we're going to do, and we're going to do it. But we got to admit, well, I got to admit, G1, that shot, we can't do it. It's trying to get over a cough, trying to get over being super sick, trying to get this done, trying to play catch up on Fire Pro, trying to get stuff done, and actually some gaming, um, trying to live our life, trying to watch movies. G1, we know Zack Sabre Jr. won it. We're going to try to watch uh, other New Japan stuff as it come up. The other stuff that we got to get to, and we apologize to you, Jones, for not getting to this sooner, but I did not want to do this coughing every 30 seconds to a minute and then all of that. I just didn't want to do it that way. But I wasn't going to do any more answering viewers or try anything like that until I got this done. So this is where we are. And I'm going to read this. And see, I can't remember. It's been so long. I can't remember if I've read this or not. I can't remember. Um, he says, the keyboard is my biggest enemy right now. And this is a month old. This is a month old. So forgive us. But uh, yeah, we got backlog catch up and we're going to do it. Uh, I like Solo, but I do not think he was ready to be in the singles bout for the world title. He just comes off as sort of a tough guy trying too hard to be extra tough. I still think Jacob would be a better fit for the role of leader of the bloodline. Yes. Yes. Because Jacob is what Solo is trying to be. If that makes any sense. Yes. Maybe I missed something in the match. I will try and watch it again, but that does not change the fact that everyone in the bloodline are better than Solo. <laughs> Look, you, you, it's a month old, but yeah, you're right. You're preaching to the choir, and the choir but, hand changed but, even but, after a month. And, and, and yet, everyone in the bloodline right now, even back then, a month ago, knew what to WWE than Solo. All right? You got to keep that in mind. So Solo is leader, and I'm, I'm sure the back, people in the back know that these other guys have been wrestling far longer than Solo. Ring generalship and whatnot, they are more advanced than Solo. But to the eyes of their audience, Solo has been in WWE. It wouldn't make sense for someone new to come in and be the leader unless you presented them like that. So they had to do it this way. Because imagine seeing him there for these four years and then all of a sudden somebody come in and say, I'm the leader. What would you do? You'd be mad saying, this dude been there all this time. He's been learning from the, that learning tree. You're going to come in and just be leader. He's going to count down to you. Then you're going to lose super respect for him. They had to do it this way. So when I do my stuff, I try to see it from the other point of view as well. Because truthfully, Jacob should be the leader or Tama. Yeah, those are my two picks. Yes, but this who is is threading that that needle? It, it it really is. But Solo, young in the he's young. He's young. He ain't been wrestling that long. He ain't even, he just learned how to put on his boots. Basically, I get that. So I really I'm, do. I'm enjoying the journey of Solo. That's what I'm trying to do. Enjoy the wrestling journey of Solo. He, he, I understand by him being young, he's learning, he's still new. All that is valid. Now, don't mix what we think today with what was back then. Although you pretty much haven't changed. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But, okay. For example, man and woman in a relationship and they break up. Especially if the breakup was painful or she got cheated on. She changes up how she's moving through life. You know, she might have to move out. She might get a new car. She might change her hairstyle. She might lose weight. She might gain weight. Stuff is going to change. And she is going to present a new her without who she was with. Yeah. This is what Solo Sokoa needs to do. He is the exact same dude he was under the original tribal chief now he's just trying to play tribal chief and it's not working 
He needs to go That's get a, a new makeover. That's me, but I haven't changed anything. <laughs> he needs to go get a makeover, man. He's even saying the same thing. You don't call your ex uh, sweet, sweet tush and then get a new and call him sweet tush too. No. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even do that dumb you, shit. You don't do so, that. Yeah. He's going out. What's he saying? What's the line? Acknowledge me. Okay, nope. That's just that's just a heel bloodline line. That's what the leader says. You got it. That's their thing. I yeah, it's their thing, but it's a bad look. It it is. But that gets a lot of heat when someone says, Man, you're just ripping him off and they get mad at you. And someone needs to use that. There's two types. Getting mad and then being like, You're using what he's using, I'm bored, you're dumb, you're lame, I'm done with you. That those are the two types. And so you, you hope the first would be the one you get. Like you can't use his line, yada, yada, yada. And it looks even worse if, you know, the one who was originated the line is back and saying it. And, and At the and time, get, get. at the time he went back. He went back a month ago, you sure? I'm sure. I thought the pay-per-view was before that, but okay, cool. Sorry, that, 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 that hadn't happened yet. See, I'm like, you got to. He was like a week or two from getting back. Yeah, oh. a week. Okay. My bad. Move, move. Let's see. I forgot to add my thoughts on Damien versus Walter. Uh, <laughs> Gunther. Hate that name. Mm-hmm. I'm not happy with Gunther either. I, I just... It's almost... Calling him Gunther, the way, they, the way it was done, after he was in WWE NXT Europe as Walter, and he's like, come to the United States, they're not going to remember your name. You know, they didn't watch WWE NXT in Europe at all. They, they don't. Calling him Gunther is almost racist. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. That's why. That's what your name should be. And look, no. I would rather call him Walter, but then somebody like, okay, is the inside people know who I'm talking about. But if there's anyone that has never known him as Walter or just accepted the new name and can't remember Walter, they're going to be like, who are you talking about? Like, fucking uh, Tony Khan, the CM Punk situation. Even, even before the CM Punk situation, he was doing a media scrum and talking about Phil Brooks. I knew the fuck he was talking about. <laughs> and Phil Brooks, you know, he's a, he's a great acquisition and stuff. And I was like, what is he, the cameraman? <laughs> Is he a backstage handler or is something? He, is he? Does he handle the taxes? Is he catering? Yeah, is that is that catering? Who is it, Phil Brook? <laughs> so yeah, is is that kind of thing? So, um, it, it was a great, um, it was a great horse fight, and the finish was excellent. I knew Devitt was going to turn, but. Prince David was going to turn, but I did not think it was that intense. Yeah. The look of Damien's face was priceless. Yes. Um, the spot where he grabbed Finn David was great. This is one of the few matches where I did not mind interference. Damien snatched up and went after him. I was like, oh, my goodness. I, I, I was like, oh, it's on. I, I was there. I was there. <laughs> Uh, WWE tributes, quote unquote, are pretty bland, but I can at least understand the gesture. Yeah, some some look good; they're presented well, but it's more like, why are you doing this? What tribute? Um, they do tributes to the Samoans. They do it when someone passes and stuff like that. And oh, okay, is he referencing something? That's something specific. Um, it was I think probably the SmackDown, and then part of the opening of the uh, the, the uh, I don't know if it was a pay per view or premium live event, but either way. Um, Who's a tribute to? Is what I'm asking. Oh, it's been a, it's been a, a, over almost two months now. I, it's, okay, cool. Give me give give me a break. I can barely remember last week. So, okay, be honest with you, I don't remember last week. That's cool. It went by fast. I think. <laughs> I don't know. It probably went slow, and I can't remember how slow it went. Um, and he says, I like David, and Jake Lee has a bigger ego and has more experience than David. Uh, I think at some point, Lee will slowly begin to take over Bullet Club. Though, personally, I think the Bullet Club brand should be retired already. People have been saying that for years. 
War dogs and House of Torture are their own factions at this point and have outgrown the Bullet Club label. Y yeah. 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 Indeed. Yeah. Because they talking about it. I was like, what's Bullet Club then? Yeah. Yeah, Bullet Club should be gone. Gone. AJ Styles would have done well, although I think Carl Anderson started. Yeah, he started. But to, you know, get a trademark copyright. So it's like, yeah, you can use it uh, until. Uh, Umino Shota is definitely, well, he says Shota is definitely getting better, but he needs to move on from his goon phase. Well, he says Moxie, but I say goon. Mm. Suzuki is not that fragile. I understand he's getting older, but he can still go in the ring. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cedra is just mm. evil at this point. What? She is more evil than evil. Why am I evil? Because you're evil. Shit, just deal with it. So, so I, no, I, I, you know, make her the leader of House of Torture. She could put them in their place <laughs> and get them to stop all with all this BS. <laughs> His favorite fruit, grapes. Thank you. I love oranges. I oranges yeah but grapes oh man thick round them crunchy just juicy yes mm. you sure you're alone back there not that i remember uh-huh uh i think cedar is just upset that tai chi is not in the g1 this year oh see goodness. i agree with that i agree y'all i agree with me. that I don't know who I was rightfully hating on, but I was you right. You hating on evil and, and, and all of them. Okay, so everything I said was and right. And you clearly don't like dick. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. That's mean. But I don't like that dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, which dick do you like? The one, the, the, the one behind me that's seemingly not alone. I'm not no dick. As I said... Why are you insulting me? Everything. Man, tell me that I'm a hater. No. I was like, just, Togo? Grayson? Who is Some, Grayson? Dick Grayson. <laughs> Burt Ward. <laughs> Him dick. <laughs> I don't know why this witness to this. I don't know how we got well, here. Well, thinking about Dick Grayson's, he says, this is the next one. This is still a month ago. Grayson Waller has so much. See, you like that segue. Who's Grayson, Grayson Waller? <laughs> he's, he, uh, he should be the Australian guy. His last name was Waller? Yeah. Well, it's wrestling. It's what they do. They, they just give you different names. <laughs> no, no, from no, Gunther no. to Walter. <laughs> no, I don't remember one time seeing from Grayson from Waller kid to, to wrestling. To when did to it just stop <laughs> What? We were talking about the G one, right? No, no, we moving on. That that was that was a month ago, but that was well, who the hell is Grayson Waller? The Waller, the, the Grayson Waller effect. His, his TV show on SmackDown every once in a while, and he's tag team with um, what what uh, the other guy named? I, I, I forgot. A Town Down Under. That's their name. Well, yeah. That's yeah, a, that's the suck ass name. Uh, uh, Austin Theory. <laughs> He teamed up with him, and they almost look alike. It's a it's a suck ass name. See, she has she's been hearing all of this, but not paying attention to any of this. Look, I'll be honest with you. I only started really recognizing a little bit of Grayson Waller just three weeks ago. So, is it the Kingdom Effect? Um. Mm, no, it's not the Kingdom Effect. Okay. It's not that, but it's a kissing cousin of it. <laughs> Took us seven years to figure out who the kingdom was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my leg. Uh-huh, see? Quit your laughing. That's <laughs> karma. It's true, though. Your plant toy is acting up. My plant toy? My plant toy is fine. <laughs> my piriformis caused the issues. Oh, your piriformis. Yes. All right. So he says Grayson Waller has so much potential to be a great heel in the in the mid card, but for some reason WWE keeps treating him like a joke. Seriously, is it any wonder why some wrestlers want to leave WWE? Well, see, they want to, but they can't. See, if you leave WWE, you can go to AEW, make a whole lot of money, but you'll have no legacy. Yeah, no legacy. You'll rarely wrestle, and if you do, it's gonna suck. You will look good for about a month to the pay per view, and then you're gone for about two or three months. And then you come back with a storyline that no one's been privy to. 
<laughs> unless you're a big man where you'll never see the light of day. Yep. Even without Vince, the booking is still crap. Case in point, pretty deadly. Okay, look. Okay, well, he says he says a decent tag team that has been reduced to another crap comedy act because WWE hates tag team wrestling. Yeah, but you know what? I'm gonna be straight up with you. They're too small to be deadly. Mm-hmm. They aren't pretty. They look flimsy, and I'm not happy with that team. Now you know them differently, so I will trust your words and your experience with watching that team before they went to WWE. I don't watch indie. I don't seek stuff out like that. We watched uh, what was it? Uh, Caribbean wrestling, Caribbean. All Caribbean wrestling. All Car- yeah, we watched that. Now that, that show was a. It was a while ago that that major event, but it was good. It was good. It was good. Um, so your experience with Pretty Deadly, you probably seen them amazing where before they got to WWE, but you are accurate Jones on that, that yeah, WWE, they don't like tag teams. Nope. Never have. Santos Escobar is another good heel wrestler who should have gotten a big push months ago. I can agree to that from what I've seen. And then they started pushing him a little. I'm, I'm breaking this timeline, but more recently they started pushing him, and then he's gone. He, they started pushing him. He started looking good, sort of Sopranos kind of thing, and then gone, just gone. Uh, if he if he was in TNA, Santos would have been built up into a main event man and winning a world title, maybe, maybe. Going on how TNA looked, I can't really disagree with you. I can't really, I'm not saying TNA looks bad, but it's, they, it's something about them. But I haven't cared to watch them since the Hardy showed up. Jeff, I'm fine with. Matt, no. He's um, a train wreck. Every, every time we see him, he is a damn train wreck. You see, how do you expect any WWE to show, yeah, expect any WWE to show that they mean business when they are being held back? by the bloody incompetence of their employer. This is the same company that jobbed out Vader to Shawn Michaels and treated him like an afterthought because Vince was too busy sucking up to prima donna Shawn. Um, this is the same bloody company that pushes bullies like JBL but neglect promising talent. This is the same bloody company that buried the Road Warriors and exploited Hawks' alcoholism, alcoholism for ratings. WWE will always continue to shoot themselves in the foot and no one will bloody care. Get well soon, CR. And thank you. This, I was coughing so bad at this time in the kidney and stuff. All that. It was just, yeah. It was bad. A lot of healing to do. A lot of healing. Um, you know something, Jones? I can't disagree. Nope, and I'm not because I agree. <laughs> but I have an explanation on why they're like, but why it was like that. And the simple explanation is the bullies, the the whether they were tough guys or not, but they showed assertiveness, authority. They showed that they would play politics and and, and ruin anybody. And I'm gonna tell you why they got over. They got over. Because Vince McMahon was like that himself. He, you're going to hate hearing this, is a, a Republican thing. Those people respect that. It's not so much hard work. It's smart heel work. Get yourself over. Anyone weaker than you, even if you're trying to crumble them, push them to the bottom, if they're weaker, it'll show because they're not going to do anything. And all those little private matters, you know, like Mark Henry breaking down JBL and whatnot, that's not going to be known. You're not going to see that. You got to be able to politic. You got to be able to go to Vince and say, yeah, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do, yada, yada, yada. And he's like, well, that sounds good because he'll see that confidence, that assertiveness. He'll see that. And if you're a little on the sauce and getting kind of big, you ain't got to be ripped. You just got to be big. Vader was a nice guy. Sean was Vince's guy. So when Vader messed up and Sean did what he did, 
any other wrestling company, Sean would have been suspended or pushed out. Like, you got to go. Because that's, that's just way unprofessional. That's done in front of twenty to 30,000 people. And, and at the time, 10 million people at home. He would have been gone. It's like, what is wrong with you? But Sean only did that because he know the sway that he got. Because if you somebody that don't got that level of sway, you're not doing that. It's like the kid at home screaming and yelling and trying to bully his parents because the parents don't do anything. But the parents whop that ass. That kid ain't doing that. And if he's going to do it, he's going to do it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So... That was the that was the atmosphere of WWE, and Triple H made his bones in that atmosphere. So that right there, if Triple H even knew that's what was going on, if Paul Levesque knew that's what was going on, and he had some enlightenment, some you know a little self introspection there, he probably like, wait a minute, we need to push people that look like they should make it. Are the fans interested in this person? Let's push them. When the fans lose interest. We'll knock them down just a little bit, but keep them, keep them there, keep them fresh. It would have been something like that, but nope. Only certain people are going to go over. But at the same time, I want to bring, I want to bring light to this. Okay, all right, Jones. Anybody else listening? Please, just, just give me a chance here, and this will help you. In professional wrestling, and this is where Tony Khan is failing. In professional wrestling, it is by design of the company, of the way things got to go, you need your top talent, you need your mid-card people, you need your, your undercard people, all right? Who opens? Who's in the middle? Who's going to close? That doesn't change. It has to stay that way. You've got two to three hours for this, for this stuff to happen. So in two hours, you got to have roughly six matches, maybe less. So who's going to be your two opening, your two middle, and your, your closing? You see what I'm saying? So you've got those people that you're going to push. You've got your bloodline, your Cody, your Kevin, <coughs> your, your Orton. Then you've got your mid carters. You're going to have your Escobar. You're going to have uh, Andrade, Carmelo, uh, Knight. You're going to have those people there and and maybe some of the women, you know, depending upon and your opening is going to be more catch up or whatnot. And then some some other people, not unless you want to start off hot. Then you start off with your low main event people or your top main event people and close out with something else. That's what you got to do. So when these people get hired, even if they got the chops to have that it factor, the company says, you know what? You're mid card. We could put you to the top, but that slot's already filled by these five or six people. You got to stay mid card. And since we don't know how to operate mid card decently, you're always going to look like a chump. That's basically what they should spell out and say. <laughs> just, just say it. You're going to look like weak sauce, milk toast bread, a fake wafer. That's what you're going to look like. And so, no matter what, all these people, Jones, you know, anybody listening, they're, they got to stay where they are and they're going to look weak because that's the model. AEW don't have that model so much. So everybody is everywhere. And then they're gone after a small push because they think after they're gone for three months, they come back and they're still rivaling. That's long term storytelling because they don't know what storytelling is. And that's the two dichotomies. If you don't have that set up, that means you don't have it so that somebody can try to break through and get to the top. Because then let's say you get those people that you talk about going to the top. Now you got top people. You got 10 of them. Somebody's being mid-card. You're going to be a mid-card top guy. So, you know, try to reconcile that. Like on Raw, your opening people should be in the first hour. Your mid-card should be the second hour. Your main event people should be the third hour. And then you'll say, well, this person's mid-card, but, but I know who they are. I can see the promise in them, so they should be top. So now you've got to push those one to three or four people to the top where they could easily fill an hour with six matches if they wanted to. 
but you know now no one's going to be really mid carding and there's no mid card to hold everything so now you got advertisements you got catch up you got more advertisements people get sick of that they tune out they lose ratings they lose all kinds of stuff because nobody's going to tune into that second hour there's a lot to think about with this stuff which is the stuff i really really don't really care to talk about too much but that's that's why things are as messed up as they are and that's those, those are the two legitimate and jacked up reasons why WWE will not change and leadership has to make those tough calls but at the same time like people like pretty deadly and and, and whatnot they don't have to be made to look like fools keep them mid card keep them entertaining people want to see them but then you make them look like weak prima donna jackwads and that's i think what ticks jones and others off because they look good. You know their history. They come to imagine, imagine Cedra God showing up. They never speak a role. They're fighting opening matches, and they start wearing white. And they start acting like they're pretty boys. Imagine Tama Tonga trying to be beautiful, Bobby Eaton. It's not going to work. He's not going to come out there brushing his hair back and flicking his hair like he's the most handsome guy on the planet. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much what's going down. You know? And thanks for the well wishes and whatnot. So we're going to get on with SmackDown after this one. So... This has been Cedric Cedric for CRS and Commentary Entry and Viewers. And with that, we want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And we'll see you next time.